We're gonna take a look at how to do some cinematic color grading today using Adobe Premiere Pro. If you're new around here, my name is Nathaniel Dodson. Let's check out an example of what we're going to be doing today. Pretty cool, right? Before we jump into the video, I gotta mention, guys, today's video is sponsored by my good friends over at Audible. They've got the largest collection of audiobooks online, lots of incredible stuff. For instance, one of my favorite books of all time, they have Seth Godin's Icarus Deception, narrated by the man, Seth Godin himself. It's an incredible book, one of my favorite. It's gonna inspire you to be a more creative person. It's just an inspiring book. What else can I say? Go to audible.com slash tutvid. You get a free audiobook when you sign up for the 30-day free trial. Audible.com slash tutvid or text tutvid to 500-500. Audible, we love you very much. Thanks for sponsoring the video, supporting the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, let's jump into this video and learn a little bit about some cinematic color grading. All right, here I've got my sequence laid out. I got a couple clips that I shot. It's just all done. One soft box directly overhead. And you can see at a certain point, I pull this white card underneath, uh, which is sort of for dramatic effect, but also it's going to bounce some light back into my face. Um, and of course, you know, you can't act like a secret agent without the cheap Walmart sunglasses. So that's obligatory to have that, that cheesy uh, type shot in there. But you know what? It's a bunch of fun. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grade these shots, make them look interesting. These are all straight out of the camera. Uh, these are shot in uh, Canon C log, but it is 8 bit, not 10 bit. So we're not we're not doing anything crazy here. If you've got a DSLR and you're pulling footage off of that, you'll be just fine. All right, so here we go. We're going to begin with this first shot. So I'm going to select the shot on my timeline. And the way that I like to work with this, I go right to the color workspace here in Premiere by just hitting the word color up here, and it's going to open up Lumetri color. And as soon as I begin making edits to the, the color, it's going to apply a Lumetri color effect to the clip. So I like to begin with curves because that's just where I like to begin. Um, one of the things here is the Lumetri scopes. I tend, if you right click here, I like to keep my YUV vector scope up and also the waveform RGB. RGB parade is also nice, uh, but definitely the waveform and the, ve the vector scope YUV so I can keep track of what colors are saturated more or less as I'm trying to match the colors uh, of all my shots as I go through. So what I'm going to look to do here is introduce a bunch of contrast. I really want to darken up the blacks. You can see everything's raised up off of that absolute black point. So down here in the curve, this is our absolute black point. We're going to click and drag that to the right, just like that. And you can see how it's really darkening up the shot, making it very, very rich. We're going to add a little film fade to it later, but I, I like what we're getting here. I'm going to click somewhere toward the middle. I'm going to darken the shot overall, and then I'm going to click up here and add a little bit more brightness into my highlights. I'm going to pull back on that darkness that I added to the darker part of the image, and then I'm going to flatten out the absolute whites in the image. So it's going to sort of dull the really spiking white parts of the image. We're not going to do any color effects here in curves yet yet. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to go over here to creative and I'm going to look through the different creative looks that they have. It can be really easy to just use the arrows and flip through and they've got a lot of interesting stuff. I think what I'm going to do is go with the first one, the Cinespace 2383 sRGB. Uh, the reason, and you can just click here on the thumbnail to get it, it's obviously way too powerful. Most LUTs, most sort of color lookup table effects that you're going to apply are. Uh, Premiere gives us this really nice intensity slider, so I'm just going to drop the intensity way way down, something like that, and I'm going to boost the faded film effect to around 8, 8, 9, 10, something around there. I usually add about 20 or so sharpening onto most of the stuff I shoot. The stuff was shot with the Canon C100 Mark II. Most of the stuff I shoot, I like to throw some sharpening onto there. I'm going to reduce the overall vibrance, maybe knock it down negative 15 or so. We could play with shadow and highlight tint. I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to collapse creative and go back to basic correction. This is where you'll do kind of your color correction. Some people prefer to do color correction before doing any kind of grading stuff. It all depends on your workflow. In this case, I'm going to do some color correcting now. I think I want to warm up the shot because I'm really focusing on my skin tones here and we do have this warm light in the background. And then tint, I can see if I swing it to the green, I get, you know, this type look, which isn't, you know, that maybe that's the look that we're going for in the film. Uh, if I swing more toward the magenta, it's kind of a weird pinky look. I don't like it too much, but I think I want just a tiny influx of magenta. I could play with exposure, contrast, all that. I think the only thing I'm going to do here is boost 
the amount of highlights and also whites just to kick some light into my face uh, and further bring out the contrast of the scene. All right, I'm going to click basic correction to just collapse that. All right, let's take a quick break here and give a shout out to our sponsor today. That's Audible. Audible's where you go simply when you want audiobooks. You get one free audiobook each month when you sign up. They also now have something called Audible Originals, which are these exclusive audio titles. You're not going to find them anywhere else. They are, after all, exclusive. Uh, if you do want to make more money with your company and negotiate your deals better, uh, check out Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. He's an FBI negotiator. It's an awesome book. Uh, I read it at least once a year. It's changed how I do business. It's changed how I negotiate with well, everyone, clients, family, l- virtually everybody in my life. Uh, get your first audiobook for free when you try Audible for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash tutvid or text tutvid to 500-500. That's audible.com slash tutvid. Or again, text Tutvid, T-U-T-V-I-D, to 500-500. Show them some love. Audible, thank you for supporting the channel. We love you very much. Let's get back to the video. And looking at it, I'm going to go back to creative. I'm going to boost the intensity just a little bit more. Uh, I'm not going to increase the faded film. We're going to do that in curves in a second. I am going to reduce the vibrance a little bit more, though. I'm going to knock it down to like negative 30. Collapse creative. Let's go back to curves. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lift the black point a little bit up from where it is. I'm not going to move it back to the left. I'm just going to lift it a little, and it's going to give me an even stronger faded type effect. Now, remember, this is just this one shot of this little sort of compilation eclipse that I'm looking at. We're going to apply this across all the clips in just a second. But for now, I kind of like the way it's looking. I'm going to collapse curves. We do need to do a couple more things. I'm going to go to HSL secondary. We're going to touch on the three-wheel color correction in just a second. HSL uh, secondary allows you to target a specific color within your frame and do something with it. So maybe the blue jacket's a little bit too blue. We could target that. Or maybe the orange light, we want to make it a little bit more rich. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to set the color, hit the eyedropper. I'm going to choose the outer ring of the light. Now, I can't really tell what's been targeted. So I'm going to click the little preview option here, the color gray, check that on, and you can see that's all that we've targeted, so not very much. Here's what we'll do. We're going to uncheck that. We're going to hit the plus eyedropper to add some colors here, and we're going to just kind of, you know, make sure that we select a healthy amount of that light. Let's go back to color gray. We've selected a lot more. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just say, look, select stuff that's also a little bit less saturated. There we go. And I think that's pretty good. We'll denoise it a little bit, and we also want to blur it a little bit just so it really blends in and doesn't have weird harsh edges. That's good. I'm going to uncheck color gray. And then I would come down here to the correction area and I can do whatever I want. I can influence a specific color if I like. What I'm going to do is just push some more orange into it, push a little more contrast into it, reduce the sharpness of that area and increase the saturation a little bit. So if I come up here and I uncheck HSL secondary, you can see we're just giving the light a little more kick. I'll collapse HSL secondary. By the way, also in curves, you have this hue saturation curve area down here where you can do a ton in terms of adjusting the, the saturation and all sorts of things across your entire uh, frame. We're not going to get into that here at this moment, though. What I do want to do is go to color wheels and match, and I want to... Uh, introduce a bunch of blue to this because I want this to look like a cold, clinical, steely type of setting. So I'm going to click down here to introduce more blue into the shadows. That's way too much blue. So let's drag, the, uh, you can double click the little uh, icon to reset and then you can just click, uh, click anywhere on the wheel and it's going to drop that, uh, the little target down to that area. So if I click all the way down here, it's going to make it very blue and I can click and drag it back uh, just to really dial in the amount of blue that I want. So maybe something more like that's good. Maybe I'll come up here to the mid-tones. I'll add a little blue to the overall mid-tones as well. That's nice. And then for the highlights, you know, that, that cinematic blue teal in the shadow and kind of yellow, orange, red uh, in the highlights. That'll work well for us here. And again, if I shut off color match, I'm sorry, not color match. I'm reading the color match here. The three-wheel color uh, deal down here. You can see the difference that it makes. It's making a big difference for us. And the last thing I'm going to do is just a couple more color changes. I'm going to come in here to the blue channel on curves, and I'm going to boost the blue point for the shadows. That's this point all the way down in the bottom left. That's going to add a little bit more blue into my shadows, just a very tiny bit. And I'm going to pull down on the blue point for the highlights. That's going to add a little bit of uh, yellow to the highlights, but it's very subtle as you can see. I may also take red and pull the red point down. The opposite of red is cyan. So by doing this, we introduce a lot of cyan to any of the bright areas of the image, like my skin here. And I'll collapse that. We can see here in our scopes, we have a frame that has a lot more blue than anything else in it. And that's totally fine. Uh, it's of overall a very, very dark scene. There's not a lot of bright stuff going on right here. This little spike, that's going to be our light bulb area uh, that's really shooting up there. 
And in terms of the saturation, uh, the most saturated part of the scene is this yellow orange, which is going to be the light there. And after that, it's going to be the blues. You can see we are, our little saturation indication is splaying out toward blue more than anything else, which of course is going to be my jacket and the overall blueness that we've introduced to the scene. All right, let's go back to the normal editing mode real quick. Actually, I'm going to go to my bare bones setup here just to keep things running smooth. I now have a Lumetri color added to this clip. I can click the FX to shut it off. There's before and there's after. Now to get this grade from this one clip to the other clips, you could right click and save it as a preset. I'm just gonna copy it and then I can select each of the other clips here and you can see effect controls, there's no lumetry here and just a simple command or control V will paste it in place. There's our color grade added to that clip. You can see how this would be very slow if you have tons and tons and tons of clips. Uh, you could also use an adjustment layer. Again, it all depends on how your film is laid out. Sometimes an adjustment layer would be perfect. In this case, actually an adjustment layer would be great, uh, but I'm just trying to keep things super duper simple for this part of what we're shooting. So you can see there it is all graded. And by the way, I can shut off the effects with my global FX button there. And you can see there's before, turn this thing on and here's what we've got now. So as you're looking at it, you may realize, you know what, this shot needs a little bit more contrast. That's fine. Click it, go back to the color editing mode. We could just do something like go back to curves, go to the white point, and we could just darken the shadows down a little bit more here, spike the highlights a little bit more. Uh, you know, essentially do whatever we need to do. Push those highlights up. Just make sure that the shot still looks like it belongs when you go from this shot to that shot and so on and so forth. So that's the color grading part of it. To add a little bit more in terms of the cinematics, uh, the audio is a huge amount. The crop is a huge amount. There are a lot of different things. I'm going to go just to my bare bones setup here. Let's talk about the crop first and foremost. This is kind of interesting. Actually, no. Let's talk about adding some grain first. Uh, I've got this 8 millimeter film grain. I'll have it linked down in the description. Uh, you can get this as a free download. I'm going to just add it to this above my video. I'm going to trim the back end. I'm going to select the grain. And up here on my effect controls, I'm going to set it to overlay. And that's really a lot of grain. You can see it's just a lot, a lot of grain in there. I'm going to reduce the opacity to like 40%. Just something that's subtle, but just gives uh, just a nice film look to what we're working on. Now that we've done that, we're going to create an adjustment layer here in my project bin. I'm going to just make it a little bit larger. I'm going to hit the new button, choose adjustment layer. Yep, everything's great. Take the adjustment layer, drag it out on top of everything, drag it across our video, All right? And any effect we apply to the adjustment layer will be applied to all the video beneath it. So what we'll do is find our effects panel. And in here, I'm going to search for the crop. We're going to drag and drop a crop onto the adjustment layer and for a nice cinematic crop, whoop, we don't want to, we don't want to set it to a blend mode. I accidentally rolled over that. Uh, we just want to set the top, you crop it to either 12 or 13%. Uh, I find whoop, the top and bottom should be 12 or 13%. You see how it gives us those nice bars. But of course, as we move through our clips like this, too much of my head's being cut off, which means that here for the last shot, too much of my head will be cut off as well. So let's select the clip. And here for along the Y axis, let's just drop it down. Let's choose 590 there. Uh, and of course, this will be different for whatever video clips you're using. I'm just going to make sure because both those shots are similar. They're both 590. This shot here obviously needs to be moved down. Let's move it down 100. Let's go 640. That's good. And I think I come back to that shot later right here. So I'm going to say, yep, give me 640 on that as well. And I think other than that, maybe this shot, we could move it down a little bit as well. Maybe take it to like 600, maybe 640. Let's see what 640 looks like. I kind of like it. So now we have a much more cinematic look. We've added the grain, we've got those bars, and we've got a really cool look here for our little piece of graded film. I did mention though about music and uh, let's do that. I've got the audio tracks already in place. I just faded them beginning and end. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I stripped out all of the audio that was there in the camera and I'm just adding an ambient city track. So let's listen real quick. All right, you can see what that sounds like, adds a lot of life to it. And then I just have this dark and moody music that I'm putting on top of that ambient city track. Let's listen to it together real quick. So as you can see, pretty cool. Uh, we very quickly go from just kind of standard footage that's coming out of a camera. You can do this with any type of footage. It's lit with one light. There's nothing special about the lighting setup. Um, you know, there's some nice cinematic color grading. It's a lot of fun and it can totally transform the look of your footage. And like I said, use these techniques. It doesn't have to be like dark, moody, grainy, cinematic stuff all the time. It just might be something that you need the colors to pop more. Or the sky needs to be a different color, things like that. You can do it all with Lumetri Color in Premiere Pro.
Well, there you have it. That is how you can go about using Lumetri Color in Adobe Premiere Pro to do a lot of really cool stuff with color grading. It doesn't all have to be super cinematic looking stuff. It can just be normal footage. You're shooting broad daylight in the middle of the park somewhere, knowing how to change the color of the sky a little bit, change the color of the grass a little bit, adjust the color of the ocean when you're at the beach, or make the sand a little warmer. Things like that can make a massive difference in your videos that you're producing. So, for learning all about Lumetri Color and cinematic color grading here in Adobe Premiere Pro, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.